Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to New Zor Education. Um, we, uh, I decided to add this particular lecture um, to a, a topic which I thought was actually completed, um, but apparently it's not completed. So we will talk about Doppler effect. And today we will talk only about Doppler effect for longitudinal waves like sound. So I will use sound as an example, basically. Now, this lecture is part of the course, which is called um, it's physics for teens, actually. But you see, the purpose of this is um, I will use probably this in the relativity in the later topic. So it's written here, relativity for all, but actually it's about the previous course. It's part of the physics for teens. It's part of the um, chapter called Waves. Uh, so if you will go to website unisor.com and go to Physics for Teens and then choose uh, the chapter called Waves, you will see the topic which is called Waves in Medium. So this is about a Doppler effect um, uh, in sound because the sound actually is waves in the medium and the medium is air just generally speaking okay so let's get to the point first of all uh, let me remind you a couple of characteristics of waves uh, first of all we have something which is called frequency i will use the letter f so frequency is number of um, oscillations per second and uh, it's related to the period period is the time between two peaks of the waves so obviously it's uh, inverse to, to the frequency if this is the time between the peaks and the one peak is actually one wave so the number of waves per second would be uh, 1 over t now, um, lambda is the distance, physical distance in meters, basically, between the peaks. So that's the wavelengths. And there is also a concept of a speed. Well, now, what is speed? Well, for example, you can say that speed is you have one length of one wave divided by the time this wave takes to pass. So that would be speed, right? Or, in other words, it's lambda times f. The f is the frequency, it's reverse t, right? Or, if you wish, f is equal to u divided by lambda, um, and this is from this. And this is something which I will definitely use, basically, this latest incarnation of all these very simple formulas. Okay, now what is Doppler effect? Now Doppler effect is um, basically a difference between the frequency of the sound produced by some source and the frequency you perceive, you hear, because it depends on many different circumstances and in particular as far as the Doppler effect, effect is concerned. Um, it's related to a movement, mutual relative movement, uh, between the source and, uh, and, and the receiver. So, I will consider only the simplest case when the source is standing st still and the receiver is moving to or from this particular source. All other cases are actually very easily derivable from, from this one. For example, if the receiver stands still and source is moving. Well, but basically the same thing because the, it's a relative distance between them and the speed of this distance is changing. That's what's actually important. If both of them are moving, m m moving and not along one line as I will consider, but something in space, like different trajectories, well, that's a little bit more calculations, but idea will be exactly the same just more tedious calculations which will give you basically the same thing. Well, in general, if you are approaching the source of sound, your frequency would be higher 
your perceived frequency will be higher than the one which source actually emits. If you go away from the source of sound, your perceived frequency would be less. So the tone will be lower than the one produced. And that's what I'm going to basically prove right now. Okay. So let's assume we have a source which has certain frequency. Let's put at zero. Certain, obviously, uh, period, certain wavelengths. Um, this is a speed of sound in this particular case. So that's the source. Source is fixed. Let's just say that this is zero. And my first case is when um, the receiver, when the observer is moving towards the source with speed v. One dimensional case, I'm not going any more complicated calculations. So initially, at time is equal to zero, my observer is at point A. And it moves towards the source. From the source you have waves of sound this guy is producing. So let's just fix some time period. Let's say this is a location after certain time t. What will be the coordinate in this case? It will be a, a. Uh, uh, I, I'm using a basically as a as a distance. So the distance would be a minus v times t, right? If v is the speed, t is time during which it moves. So that would be a, a location. Well, obviously I have to choose t in such a way that we are still on this side of the sound. I don't want to cross the sound. So t should be less than uh, whatever, a divided by b. So it's still, in this particular case, it's still some kind of a positive distance. So this is distance a, this is a minus vt from zero, from the source actually. Okay, now what kind of how many actually waves this guy will cross while he is moving. Well, if waves do not move, then obviously he will cross this distance, which is v times t divided by the lengths, uh, wavelengths. But waves are moving, so not only these waves uh, will cross his way, but also some waves which are here. Now, how many? Well, by the time he moves here, all waves which are here will move towards his zone of perception, so to speak, right? So during the same time t, waves which are moving this way with the speed u, so if this is u times t, so these are all the waves which also will be able to come into his zone of perception during the same time t, right? So all the waves from this point to this point will cross his way while he will be moving from this to this, right? So what is this way, the length? It's a minus vt minus ut. So a minus vt, which he himself, the, the, the observer, covers, plus these uh, will uh, actually um, uh, add to his perceived number of waves. So this is a distance, basically. All the waves which are in this distance initially at time t is equal to zero, will be crossing his way as he is moving during time t, right? 
So, this is a distance, right? And uh, the time is t. So basically, um, if I will divide this by lambda zero, I will have number of waves. So this is number of waves. Um, lambda zero is wavelengths, and this is the total distance a minus this and minus this. Um, well, I'm I'm sorry. Um, actually, I don't need a anymore. So it's just this plus this. Sorry. So this plus this. Yes, that would be probably the whole length. Uh, this is all the waves which the guy will cross. This is the wavelengths. So this is number of waves. Yeah, that's it. Now, if I have number of waves and I have the time, if I will divide one by another, I will have frequency, right? Number of waves per certain amount of time. So my perceived frequency is equal to n divided by t, which is equal to, if I divide it by t, it would be u plus v divided by lambda 0, or u divided by lambda 0, 1 plus v over u. So this is the formula. And from this, look at this. This is my F0. This is initial frequency of the sound emitted by the source. And now I have a factor which is greater than 1. So the frequency, perceived frequency, is greater. Perceived frequency is greater than initial frequency by this factor. So basically, that's the formula which means that the, the pitch is higher. So whenever you're moving towards um, a source of sound, you hear higher tone than produced by the, uh, uh, by the source. OK, so let's do the opposite thing. Let's, for instance, consider we are moving away from the source. OK, the picture will be very similar. This would be my source, and this will be my initial location at the that time equals to zero. And this would be my location at sometimes t. Okay, now this guy goes with the speed v, and these waves are going with the speed u. Well, we should assume right now that the u speed of waves, speed of sound in this case, is greater than v. Because if v is greater, we will never hear anything at all. We are moving faster than the sound. So let's assume that u is greater than v. OK. Now, u is greater than v. So at moment t equal to 0, there are you know, some sounds. So, um, now this guy starts moving. Now, the waves which are at this point and further are moving faster. This will never, so he will never cross these waves. He will only cross the waves which will overcome him because from, from this piece, which will overcome him uh, while he is moving from here to here. They they're moving faster and they will overcome him. So these waves, so which waves he will basically uh, hear? 
well, obviously he will start hearing those waves which are immediately here because they're just right behind him but they're moving faster so he will definitely hear them now which 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 fields which waves actually he will be able to to, to hear until this moment well this distance should be equal to u times t because by this moment all the waves which are on this particular distance or or less from him will be able to he will be able to to hear they will overcome him so by the time he will cover this distance they will cover this distance so he will basically hear only these waves from v t so this is this is v t and this is u t so u times t minus v times t this is the distance where the waves he will be able to hear are located now their wavelength is this so that's how many waves he will cross and therefore his frequency is equal to n divided by time which it takes which is u minus v divided by lambda zero which is u lambda zero u lambda zero times one minus in this case it's minus v over u initial frequency times one minus v over u okay so here is basically very close to the previous formula but it's minus instead of plus here which means that the frequency is lower which means that the whole tone is lower so whenever we are going away from the sound we hear a lower pitch than the one which was produced by the source of sound now obviously many experience this whenever i mean i live in a big street uh, in a big city and whenever the ambulance is passing by I, I hear when it's coming to and then I hear when it's coming from and the sound is different definitely well actually it's not exactly like this particular case because in this particular case they are in the same line when you observe let's say an ambulance the ambulance goes this way and you're standing here so you have a little bit more complicated um, calculations so sound is not like definitely um, higher pitch before fixed and fixed higher pitch uh, lower after when it, it's passing it's actually kind of changing gradually um, and again it's very easy to do the calculations but, but they're kind of cumbersome and um, well if you wish you can do it yourself that's really easy kind of thing so that's it uh, that's all i wanted to talk about doppler effect for in this particular case we're talking about longitudinal waves however the same kind of um, uh, doppler effect should probably exist with uh, transversal waves um, but uh, i will talk about light and doppler effects in light uh, in some other lecture one more um, interesting topic the doppler effect this is some kind of, kind of a classical doppler effect um, the theory of relativity is, um, brings some more color into this picture but again that would be a separate topic so that's it for today thank you very much and good luck